finance right now, people are pretty confused. On one hand, we think that there won't be any sort of recession. And on the other, we think that there's this impending doom that we're gonna head straight back into like 2008, 2009. And generally when people start talking about how things could go poorly, the next thing they talk about is commercial real estate. In this video, I wanna walk through this doomsday scenario because it involves a lot of dominoes toppling over each other. And I wanna walk through what's going on right now so that you at least feel in the know and can make a decision for yourself whether you think it's gonna happen or you can just follow along from the sidelines. So in order to do this, I need to back up to what I said a second ago, which is at the center of this is commercial real estate. And let's give a quick overview into what commercial real estate is. Commercial real estate is real estate that is bought for business purposes. 99% of the time, people buy commercial real estate and they lease it to other businesses. So the coffee shops, the strip malls, the retail stores that you know, those people pay rent to the commercial real estate owners. That's how they get their money is rent from these businesses. Now, a ton of things fall under this umbrella of commercial real estate, hotels, apartment buildings, even places that manufacture goods. People lease those spots from the commercial real estate owners. But at the center of this impending doom scenario is the office sector of commercial real estate. This is where commercial real estate companies buy these huge office buildings and they're super expensive and then other companies pay to lease out of that office. Here's why everyone's focused on office commercial real estate. Because leading up from like 2010 to 2020, office was the big thing. People were pouring a lot of money in developing offices and offices became almost a recruiting tool for companies to recruit employees. People were putting pools and decks and huge tennis courts on their offices. Then 2020 hit and everyone worked from home, but no one really panicked about the office sector of commercial real estate because the idea was once people go back to the office, it's gonna be like a switch that flips back on and commercial real estate will just hum along and people will eat the costs from 2020. But then we get to 2021 and we're not back in the office and finally we get to 2022 and the COVID restrictions are lifted and everyone assumed that people would just head back into the office except nobody did. Hybrid work is here to stay. Nobody's really focused on getting back to the office five days a week and companies are now planning for the future with hybrid work. So now that lease income is drying up and people are moving to hybrid offices and nobody needs as much office space, all of this work and development that was done over the last decade seems like it was too much for what's going on right now. And I think if we're looking around, we all can agree that there is just less demand for office space. The lower demand is tough for these property owners, but it's probably not enough by itself to put us into this like recession timeline. The other thing we have to focus on is interest rates. And over the last decade, except for a few years, interest rates were close to zero. This meant that when people took out debt, they were paying close to zero plus a fixed rate. There was a little piece in 2016 to 2019 that interest rates were coming back up, but then they went back down to zero as we headed into COVID. Why is this such a big deal? From 2010 to 2016, people took on debt to buy these huge office buildings. We're talking tens or even hundreds of millions of dollars in debt. We use these base rates as part of the total function to get to the total interest rate, but the base rates were all close to zero. In this example, they were 0.17%. What the bank does is it takes this rate that's close to zero and then it adds a flat rate on top of it. So in this case, as an example, we'll use 10%. So back in 2012 or 2014, if a company took on $100 million in debt, the way that the interest was calculated, and again, this is just for an example, was the 0.17 number plus a fixed rate like 10%. So your all in would be like 10.17%. Interest rates over the last year have skyrocketed. And now that base rate that was 0.17% is all the way up to like 5.3%. It's almost 6%. So when you calculate what the debt is now, it's no longer at this 10.17. Now you're talking about 10 plus 5.3% or 15.3% in interest. That 5% may not seem like a huge difference, but when you're talking about $100 million, you're paying an extra five and a half million per year for the same loan that you had before. Things have gotten much more expensive. And if you think about it, these leases that people are entering into, this isn't a hugely high profit margin business. So when you're talking about taking 5.3 million off the table just for interest expense, makes the whole business model look a little bit sketchier. And let me back up one second. When people take out debt in 2014 for like, let's say $80 million, the expectation is not that they have $80 million when the lease is up in 10 years. The expectation is in 10 years, they go find more financing it almost kind of kicked the can down the road. So they get a new loan to pay off that 80 million and then that resets the time that they have to pay it off for another 10 years. We're getting to a place over the next couple of years where the loans that were issued in 2014, 2015 in the zero interest rate environment are coming due. This is leaving commercial real estate owners with a lot of bad options. The first one is if they're able to find more financing, they're gonna continue doing the same business, but they're gonna eat into their profit margin quite a bit by 6% 
because of how much this new interest is costing on the loan. The second option is they can't find financing because banks don't wanna offer tens or hundreds of millions of dollars to a company at this type of interest rate when people don't even want offices as much as they did before. It's starting to look like a much riskier investment proposition to the banks to lend all of this money. If the commercial real estate companies can't come up with this type of money or different financing, it means that they're gonna go bankrupt. They're gonna surrender these properties to the bank and they just have nothing to do because they can't afford their obligations. And the last scenario, which is also kind of scary and it's something that we're seeing is these companies, especially the bigger ones, are realizing that this is such a losing proposition that they're just throwing their hands up and saying, I don't want any part of this. We're gonna declare bankruptcy right now. So we know that the commercial real estate property owners are facing headwinds over the next couple years. But who ends up with all of this debt or all of these losses? Is it the commercial real estate companies or the banks? This is where things get a little bit scary. Let's go back to what I said a few minutes ago where there's much less demand for office space, which means the value of the properties are going down. If the commercial real estate company can't fulfill their debt obligations, this property gets turned over to the bank. So that $100 million property and zero interest rates, while people need to go find more financing to buy these properties, which is gonna hurt the value because they can't pay as much for the properties and also there's lower demand for office space in general. So these banks could be inheriting something that they're selling for 50, 60, 40 cents on the dollar compared to what they thought they were gonna get back when they made these loans originally. And the scariest part of all of this is the banks that are most exposed to this office commercial real estate seem to be these smaller regional banks. And when people play this out and they're talking about a huge recession or more of the doomsday timeline, what they're thinking is the regional banks won't be able to stomach the losses of selling these office properties at a fire sale and they may go under. I have no opinion on what's going to happen. I'm just walking through what the scenario looks like again, so that you feel like you have an understanding of why people are saying there could be an impending recession or that there could be problems with regional banks. This is what they're talking about. They're talking about regional banks having to find ways to sell assets in order to recoup the loans that they made in a zero rate environment while there's much less demand for these commercial real estate properties. In theory, it could lead to huge losses. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Please leave questions in the comments. I'm happy to respond to everything or I can do another follow-up video if you all want more details on anything here. Please hit that like and that subscribe button. I'm a relatively new channel and it helps me get visibility with the algorithms. And I hope to see you in the next one.